Good day, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another series of Ideas Stariga Summer webinars. Uh, this one is called um, the question one or two joints. So today we'll try to answer this question and get deeper into uh, this topic about nodes within um, connection model and the internal forces on the model. So welcome. I'll just uh, turn the page of my presentation. Welcome once again. Uh, this is Adam from Idea Starica uh, uh, team. I'm a product engineer in here and I'm greeting you from the main office in Brno. Having these summer hot days here. So for those uh, who are new to our webinars, we are running on the platform of uh, GoToWebinar. So you that means you're muted by default, but you are most welcome to ask any questions during the webinar. Uh, those please type in in the question panel and I'll try to go through at the end of this session and and, and answer some of them and um, answer uh, the rest of them later uh, by email. So let's get started. Uh, today this should be a short webinar uh, focused on a specific topic. So uh, let's get rolling. Internal forces in a complex model. So what do we mean by internal forces? And what does it have to do with idea static connection models? Uh, let's start with the very basics. Um, input of load effects. That means when you start a new project in Idea Static Connection, you start modeling your joint, your connections. Uh, at one point, you have to input um, load effects, right? The values. And those are not loads, but those are in fact nodal internal forces, right? You're inputting um, shear forces, bending moments. Uh, and so on. So this works pretty simply. You've got a structure model. Those you can see uh, on the left side of the picture. You read, for example, uh, the bending moment uh, around uh, y-axis uh, and input the value into the tab in Idea Statica. As you can see, this value of 11.25 which was rounded up to 11.3. So, and then if you switch to wireframe model in Idea Static, I can see a diagram of the bending moment of uh, on that beam. So this is how it works. So you are inputing nodal internal forces, right? Now let's talk about the bending moment distribution along a beam or a member in Idea Static Connection. This distribution or this diagram is simplified as linear, right? So uh, you input the value of the moment into the node, that is this 100 on the picture, and then um, the, the distribution along the, the member is linear with the increment from the inputted shear force. So the shear force is 200 here. If you multiply by the distance from the node, you get the, the value of the bending moment. And this is of course a simplification, but because we are focusing on the very close proximity of the node, um, there is no um, no big deal in this one, and uh, these values uh, of the bending moment 
are very close to each other comparing to the structure model where the moment uh, is mostly parabolic for example and of course the solution is uh, very well validated and verified so it works just good uh, now the question is You've seen uh, before in the picture, there was a very simple model, just the column and the beam connected to it. What about the complex models, uh, such as this one on the picture? Here you have the column and the main beam connect to it, and then you have two side beams connected further from the, from the node to the main beam. That means you are, um, in putting shear forces and bending moments on these side beams that should somehow correspond to the central node. But by doing this, by modeling such a, such a joint, you are um, incorporating in, in accuracy in the bending moment. And if you try to do so, uh, you might find uh, this is even impossible to match uh, the uh, diagram of your bending moment on the main beam with your structure model. So we are actually coming pretty fast to the answer to today's question, uh, whether should we um, use one or two models for such complex joints and the answer is of course we should split those models because of this because of uh, it is impossible to to match the the real or the uh, accurate um, diagram of the bending moment on the main beam having the side beams uh, loaded so Let's take a look uh, how it should work with Idea Statica connection. This works as one node model only, right? Uh, that means you have a node in your structure model, you model this one in Idea Statica, calculate, code check, and that's it. And you should not uh, input more than one node within one model. If you try to do so uh, using a BIM link, for example, uh, that means importing a joint or connections from, let's say, Tecla or Robot or any other softwares that we are linked to, you will find out that this is even impossible to do. It allows you to uh, import just uh, exactly um, one model per one node. Let's take a look. How does it look like? I have a some kind of um, steel hull model in Autodesk robot software. And I'll try to import a complex joint made of two nodes. So this is a uh, version 20 uh, code check manager. Here you can uh, pick the uh, design code and start the project or start the uh, import of joints from this uh, robot model. So what I have to do is to choose these two nodes, right? So I'll try to import this at once. I'll click the connection icon. Now the data are being processed and transport it to Idea Statica. And let's see, whoops, I've got two models. So no way, uh, I can take a look. This one is the uh, facade joint and this one is the inner one. There's no way uh, getting those at once into Idea Statica. So now I can just finish and continue open the um, uh, connection, application, design, uh, these joints and code check them right away. But I'm not, do not going to do this right now. 
I want to continue with my presentation. So this is the Bimlink import. This works pretty well. Uh, but what about creating a model from scratch? When you start with blank screen right away in Idea Statica Connection, that allows you basically to to do anything, right? So that's, uh, for example, and you can see on the picture on the right side, uh, kind of a crazy joint, but still doable. So uh, that's why I came up with a couple of simple things to remember. Uh, one thing is always to keep the loads in equilibrium on and have all the forces balanced. Let me show you what this means. If I jump in some uh, model I've opened here, loads in equilibrium is this icon here. Keep this always on. That means this tab appears down here. Having zeros here means your internal forces are balanced as they of course are in your structure model. That's one of the basic laws of st statics. So this is the this is the correct uh, state or correct input. Another thing, uh, mixing two nodes in one model, that's what I'm talking about uh, for a few minutes already, this can lead to wrong results, of course. And this can be pretty dangerous or on the other hand, at least uh, um, non-economical. So don't do this. And what about these tangent diagonals and those, let's say, um, minor members of beams on eccentricities? Those are okay because these are, those are mostly uh, loaded uh, by uh, tension um and they don't do any harm to the overall um behavior of the model right and the last thing is uh, a philosophical uh, question use always the engineering judgment right that's easy to say sometimes difficult to uh to do but uh, this is always what we should all, of course stick to think of what we are doing in those softwares that provide um, computational analytical capacities to us but uh, of course if we handle them wrong way this can lead to wrong situations so i was let's say the um theoretical introduction. And now let's see the example that would prove what I was just talking about. So now we're going to compare um, two, or oh, actually three models. One on the left side is the complex one. There I modeled or actually a user model, because this is a, a real project, modeled a, a two nodes within um, one joint in Idea Statica Connection. And then what I did, I split this one into two and compared uh, the results. So let's see how this looks like. I've prepared the model in advance so that it would not consume that much time during our session. This is already prepared geometry as you can see. Here just to highlight the side beams are shifted by uh, more than 700 millimeters along the main beam. And uh, I'll just you know, turn on those prepared operations so I don't have to uh, set them all uh, from zero. This is just a simple uh, end plate, nothing special. The main beam is connected by both sides cleat. 
and those um, smaller side beams uh, connected to the column are connected by cleats as well. If I turn an on and show you how it looks like, those are this is very interesting detail. Uh, that's what I wanted to point out during the presentation. Here you can see the cleat welded to the uh, column web and bolted uh, to the this um, uh, hollow section web. So this is means uh, this looks like a let's say design mistake, right? Because we have bolts inside the hollow section. This is impossible to construct or or um, to to assemble on site. So, but this is not wrong because we're not finished yet. Uh, and I like this idea and, and this detail that uh, this user, this engineer who uh, designed this joint used. So he used uh, as new feature of uh, version 20, um, negative volume. What does means? Uh, this is that you basically create plates or any cross section um, of a virtual member. In this case, it's just a just a plate, but it can be anything, any cross section and you add them anywhere in the model and then you can use the cut command or cut operation uh, to just cut uh, these uh, part of the beam with this negative volume. So now it looks like this uh, and on, this, on the other side as well, of course. I turn this on. So this is one thing I wanted to show you, maybe inspire or help you uh, designing such details in Idea Statica connection. So that was interesting. And let's get to the thing that we are interested in, in our topic today. And that is the internal forces, right? So if I switch here to the wireframe view, and I select here um, this M4, that means the main beam. I can see the diagram of bending moment. And as you can see, the input is, I have some uh, internal forces on the column and the smaller uh, hollow section beams. And then I took um, the internal forces on the main beam and the side beams rounded them up to 100 so it's you know better understandable while um, showing you this as well as the moments so now we've got uh, 100 uh, per each beam of a shear force and 50 per each beam of a bending moment that means uh, the diagram looks like this, but now, of course, immediately you can see uh, that there is no change of the bending moment curve at the point where the side beams are connected, right? There should be a um, change in the trend, um, in the inclination of the diagram. So that means there's something wrong. In fact, this, this effect is taken into account in the model, but it is not displayed. But that can be one source of mistake, right? The other thing is <clears throat> that we are using or we are imputing nodal forces for this node, that is this black ball in here. So we're imputing uh, minus 50 kilonewton meters of bending moment of the main beam uh, related to this node. But we're having actually another node in here um, in front of, of the, the main one. So this is actually, if you think this through, a wrong input, All right? So another mistake. So in fact, by doing this, by creating such complex models, 
we are getting in trouble and endangering ourselves and the project by um, uh, providing or making possible to to get some errors in there. So now the question is why to do so when we can do it more simple, more safe, more effective by just splitting those models or splitting this model into two. This is the split model. If I show you the same thing, now the internal forces looks like this. I've got, if you remember, there was three times uh, 100 for the shear force. I sum it up as um, 300 now. That goes, of course, um, from the beam to the column. And still the 50 of kilonewton meters of bending moment, because here in this model, this bending moment uh, goes uh, up opposite, so it, um, uh, it doesn't affect uh, the the values in the main beam, right? So now the the diagram looks like this. I've got a different value in here at the free end. I've got different value, and that's the most important here at the position where the cleat is. And I've got, in fact, a very different model. Still, it's the same construction, same detail, same connections, same uh, load combination that provided these nodal internal forces for, this, for these two models. And now you are, of course, um, um, curious how the results will look like. So well, if I calculate this, this are now that would take uh, let's say two minutes. So I prepared uh, the calculated models, the copies in here in advance. So here you can see um, the results of the complex one where we are mixing two nodes. As you can see, there are some red parts, the column and the cleat, uh, the joint or the connection didn't pass, the code checks. Uh, that wouldn't be a mistake, but if I compare to the other joint, you can see this is looking okay here. So we conclude directly uh, this proves that splitting those two models lead to, let's say, better performance uh, of the coaching and analysis. And if I show up the third one, this is in here. Of course, it passed the coaching as well. But now, if we compare the results in here, and the complex one, uh, why this one failed and this one passed the checks. For this, I would jump back to the presentation. And this is the, this is the difference and that, that's the reason. Because in the complex model on the left side, where we have two nodes, we made a mistake in putting actually um, uh, the internal forces in the wrong way. And that led to um, calculating or analyzing a different different model. And this led to uh, the fail of the code check because as you can see here, we've got some bending moment value in the cleat and in the precise model the more simple one where we have just one node and just one main beam. Here on the right side, we can see uh, the value of bending moment in the cleat is, is uh, much, much lower. Right, so it's all about correct input and not mixing um, too many things together. So that's the conclusion. And we are getting to the end. 
just one rule to remember from today. If we have few nodes, we always split the models and keep just one model in Idea Seneca connection per one node in your structure model. This ensures you're always safe, the input is always simple, and there's nothing to um, you know, discuss or nothing, uh, no way to go wrong. All right. So that's for today's topic. Now about the questions, let's take a look. I've got uh, some questions here, so let's I'll read some of them and answer. There is one. Um, what about uh, the co-check of the beam if it's long and the moment gets too big. All right, um, that means I will probably, probably jump into this model to demonstrate uh, the answer. So the question was, or is, about if we, so if we are modeling a joint or a connection and uh, let's say we've got a huge shear force which uh, generates a huge moment at the free end of the beam, then the beam itself uh, will not pass the co-check the same way as the column in here, for example. Now the thing is, uh, as I uh, mentioned at the beginning, the real uh, the real um, diagram of the moment is 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 different, and this is very well this this can be very well seen at the free ends of the beams in Idea Static Connection compared to your structure model, because here the values they go right away from from the from the real ones or structure model ones, right? So they, they get extreme. Now, uh, but this is not a mistake in here because in Idea Statica connection, we actually don't code check uh, the members, the cross sections. If I switch to check tab, uh, you can see plates, those are the plates of the end plates and cleats. You can see bolts, welds, and so on. And for for the for the members, we provide just uh, let's say some basic overview that informs the user how uh, these beams um, work or how they um, um, how they handle the loads, and this may indicate that um, your column or beam cannot pass or withstand the load applied on it. But this is what you usually or mostly do in your structure model or already that you co-check the um, the cross section of beams and so on. And we don't provide co-checks of beams in Idea Statica connection. We focus really on the connections and all its parts and items. And now uh, another, another part of the, this question is, if I had, for example, I might draw that, um, let's say a, a long haunch like this one, a big plate welded, uh, to support the main beam. Then, as well, here the bending moment would go to a big value in here that may lead to a fail of this plate because we are applying a too huge non-realistic force or a load from the bending moment on the plate. 
and that's a let's say very special occasion and this is up to uh, the user or the engineer um, to handle this this situation this can be um, you know, handled by creating a copy of the model and and inputting a slightly different bending moment or a shear force to to create a more realistic diagram or more realistic um, uh, value of bending moment in this position according to the structure model, right? So it's more about then uh, fitting uh, the real conditions on the model. Okay, so that was one question. And another one, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, how to decide when should I create one or two models? Okay, so <laughs> a simple question to cover this whole webinar when should i split or keep one model um, well this is pretty tough one i i can't say uh, any simple rule how to do this this is really about using the engineering judgment and about making decisions and about testing and comparing for example but what i can add to this uh, we are always here in Idea Statica um, to help you. So if you're not sure in this way, if you should model a joint like this or the other way, you can send the model to us and we will help you uh, decide or help you uh, in any way to uh, sufficiently finish the, the job. Okay. That was for the questions. The rest I will answer later by email because running out of time. Uh, and just quickly uh, conclude after the webinar, please fill in the short survey. The recording of today's web webinar will be available till tomorrow in our support center or on our YouTube channel. You can get the trial version of Idea Statica, which has full functionality for free, of course, on our webpage, ideastatica.com. This works for two weeks when you can test, work, and do whatever you'd like to try on the um, our software. And support center, this one you find on our webpage. Uh, this contains all the recorded webinars, all tutorials, uh, all topics, verification examples, sample projects, and many, many more things to go through and to help you to start with or get improved uh, with. Um, the software. For the next coming webinars, next week, last of the summer series webinars uh, focused on concrete, especially on press thrust beams and the best practice for how to uh, do that in Idea Statica. Then uh, begins in September uh, the Connection Wednesdays uh, series again, the autumn part of this year. And this will begin with optimal, optimization of pent timber anchoring. So we will uh, touch the new feature of version 20, uh, means timber connections. Very interesting. And the very last thing, uh, if you would like to get certified to become a professional, in steel connection design using software Idea Statica. You can sign in uh, to this uh, online course, Idea Statica Campus. There you can go through um, 10 chapters that will lead you through uh, from the beginning, from the foundations to the end. 
and there basically you learn everything about designing steel connections and how to uh, get the job done in Idea Statica. At the end, uh, during that, uh, you fill in a few tests. At the end, you get a nice certificate. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for coming today, spending these, this half an hour with us, especially with me. I'm glad to meet you here, and I'll be looking forward for next time. So, wish you a nice day, and bye-bye.